For classic matches just like the World Cup videos, why not go to patreon.com forward slash drunk redhead. It's time to rage in the cage. It's time for a what happened on my universe more pay-per-view special. It's Hell in a Cell and it's Raw and Smackdown showing off their stuff. Including their mutual love of fireworks. We were in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we were opening with a huge Hell in a Cell match. It was the first of three. This one was between Randy Orton. Who was challenging the Beast. Incarnate Brock Lesnar. For the United States Championship. As you would expect, it didn't take long for Brock Lesnar to gain control, beating Randy Orton in the gut and then in the face with his knees and his arms. But Randy Orton wasn't going to stay down for too long. He got his early match shots in too with his fists and his knees as well, but then he went outside and got himself a sledgehammer, which kind of gave him a bit more control. With Brock hurt, Randy Orton tried to throw him to the outside, but instead rammed him straight into the cage, which just pissed Brock off. He grabbed him, threw Randy back in the ring and took him to Suplex City a couple of times. Lesnar returned the favour to Orton, smacking him into the cage wall as well, before heading to the outside and taking him to a different suburb of Suplex City. Free Germans. Nice. He continued to use the cage to his advantage before Randy woke up. Back in the ring, Orton snuck in an Olympic suplex before dropping Lesnar on the second rope and hitting a DDT onto the sledgehammer. He went for the RKO, but Brock Lesnar was ready for it and threw him down before punching him in the gut. And oh yeah, another trip to Suplex City. Lesnar threw Randy Orton to the outside once again, and once he was out there, he chucked him into the steel cage again. And then an F5, but he wasn't done there. A dirty German through the cage wall. Eventually back in the ring, Randy Orton managed to reverse a slam and get a back suplex, but it was only a matter of time before Brock Lesnar elbowed him back in the face, reversed it, and hit an F5. And that would be that for the US title match. Brock Lesnar retains once again. The second match of the evening saw Long Island Ice Z, Zack Ryder, face off against his current nemesis, Dolph Ziggler. The first shots were fired by Zack Ryder with chops and forearms and once Ziggler was down on the ropes he bounced to the outside and flicked him to the floor. This was only a minor blip for Dolph though as he reversed a Zack Ryder forearm and then suplexed and elbowed his way in front. Ziggler drop kicked Zack Ryder to the outside but on the outside Ryder reversed an arm ringer with some fancy little flippy bits and an arm drag and then finally hit his forearm. Zack hit a DDT on the outside of the ring, but back inside the ring, Dolph Ziggler took control once again with another drop kick. Then he started working on the leg and started working on Zack Ryder in general. But again, Zack Ryder wasn't staying down. He got up and hit another DDT. After dropping a knee to the head, it was time to woo 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 broski boot straight to Dolph Ziggler's face. And leg drop followed that and then a neckbreaker. Ziggler was back up after that though, and a fame asser followed, and after that, a zigzag. Would it be curtains for Zack Ryder? One, two, no. It was a kick out, just about. Dolph Ziggler continued to work on Zack Ryder. There was only so much more that Dolph Ziggler could do before Zack Ryder would bounce back up and forearm him in the face again. He waited, and then the Rough Rider followed, and it was one, two, Three. Zack Ryder was victorious, and in the post-match, he offered a handshake to Dolph Ziggler, but would he take it? Would he bollocks? He slapped his hand away and walked off. It was time for the second of our Hell in a Cell matches. This time it was for the Women's Championship, as Trish Stratus challenged Paige for the title, who was wearing a strange new blue jacket for some reason. I'm not sure why. Trish Stratus got the better of the early exchanges with forearms and more forearms and then a drop kick. But then Paige got her elbow up and took control. After a lovely hurricane runner, Paige chucked Trish Stratus into the corner and went wild with back elbows, probably giving Trish a bit of a headache. As is the norm with these type of matches, it headed to the outside and Paige kneed her in the gut before doing a nasty back suplex on the outside. 
but then Trish got up and reversed, as is usual in these matches as well. A flapjack on the apron followed and a suplex into the cell. Trish then dumped Paige back in the ring and clotheslined her down, but after that another Paige reversal followed. Paige took her to the outside, punched her in the face and hit her with a dirty jawbreaker, and then threw her into the cage. Missing a clothesline, Paige handed Trish away back into the match. She threw her into the corner post and dumped her back in the ring, ready for a hurricane runner off the top rope. Trish went for the chick kick, but Paige moved out of the way and grabbed her, ready for a rampage right into the mat. She went for the pin, won two, but Trish wasn't ready to lose just yet. A frustrated Paige headed to the outside and grabbed a sledgehammer, which she rammed into Trish Stratus more than once. And then another ram came, a rampage. And this time, would Trish stay down? No, she would not. Another kick out. The anti-diva headed outside for more weaponry, this time grabbing a baseball bat and knocking Trish right out. Also hitting a few shots to her back too. She tried to get back up but Paige took her down with a clothesline and then a Paige Turner which she finally kept her down for the 1-2-3. Paige retains the WWE Women's Championship. The middle match of the show saw Edge come out to the ring and after his fireworks went off he was quickly joined by Stardust who attacked him on the ramp. Stardust would start things off with a nasty back suplex onto the concrete floor and then followed that up with a neck breaker. Edge was up quickly however and he threw Stardust back into the ring and this time he'd boot him in the face on the way. As the match began and Edge still had his jacket on, he hit a neck breaker on Stardust before getting an elbow to the face and a bionic elbow to the face and a drop kick to the face and more stuff to the face. Following a Michinoku driver, Edge got up and reversed a punch and what a punch of his own and then a bulldog taking Stardust down. The Hall of Famer hit a big boot but then started taking the padding off the turnbuckle for some reason. He went for a sidewalk slam but Stardust reversed and hit a cross arm DDT before a disaster kick. Stardust got up and hit a crossroads on the dazed rated R superstar and amazingly won the match in a shocking result. Stardust celebrated and then celebrated some more in a different way by stamping on Edge a few times. After decimating everyone in their path, it was time for Team Fuckboy! Roman Reigns and John Cena to get their shot at the tag team titles against the team they have beaten already, the Wyatt family, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. The match began with Cena and Luke Harper and started with John Cena beating Luke Harper in the face several times before Luke Harper eventually would reverse with a toss and a nice Hurricane Rana. Harper ragdolled Cena about before tagging in Eric Rowan who worked on Cena's arm before John Cena worked on him for a bit, hitting a gut wrench suplex and tagging in Roman Reigns for some double teamness. While he waited for Eric Rowan to get up, Roman Reigns went for Luke Harper but ate a boot instead and got slammed by Eric Rowan in the process. Rowan tagged into Luke Harper and Luke Harper hit him with all he had, clotheslines and chops and weird looking suplexes. Following some double teamness from the tag champs, Roman Reigns reversed Rowan's whip into the corner and ended up getting a nice German suplex out of the bargain and then a nice elbow drop as well. Reigns was running wild with a Superman punch to Luke Harper and a spear to Eric Rowan for more double teamness when he tagged into Cena. John Cena hit a weird sit out move for a springboard stunner and an FU brought the tag team titles to Team Fuckboy! In the penultimate match of the evening, it was our third and final Hell in a Cell match. But for some reason, it wasn't the main event. Seth Rollins was challenging the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt, for the WWE Championship. Before the match, Seth Rollins tried to get a handshake out of Bray, but he wasn't having it and then Seth just slapped him and Bray got angry but Seth had the control and hit a nice elbow to the face and a blockbuster so early in the match. However Rollins control wouldn't last and Bray reversed the DDT with some punches in the gut and then came back with a choke suplex. Wyatt threw Rollins to the outside and clotheslined him down but on the next attempt he was dodged 
and Rollins started beating Wyatt about. A Northern Lights suplex followed that and then back into the ring where he drilled Bray Wyatt with a flatliner. Bray was not finished though when he got up and clotheslined Seth back to the outside. After his signature Yuranagi suplex, Bray Wyatt smashed Seth Rollins head into the floor with Sister Abigail. But somehow Seth got up and reversed. Seth beat Bray about for a bit and then put him back in the ring, threw him into the corner and then double foot stomp. Dirty double foot stomp. He got up, hit a DDT and then the schoolboy super kick. He went for the pedigree after that but Bray was ready for that. A fired up Bray Wyatt, clothesline Seth Rollins back to the outside, hit a dirty back suplex, threw him into the cage on the outside and then went back into the ring and after hitting his running sent on he did his creepy back walk thing and it was time for Sister Abigail once again and this time Seth Rollins was not getting up. Bray Wyatt retaining the WWE Championship. Surprisingly, Hell in a Cell would not be headlined by a Hell in a Cell match. Instead, The Miz was challenging The Big Show for the World Heavyweight Championship in a Falls Count Anywhere match. But I suppose it's nice at least that SmackDown got to headline the pay-per-view instead of Raw. You don't get that very often these days. With the formalities done, it was time to start the contest and for some reason, The Miz took control, throwing The Big Show into the corner and hard, The Big Show going down and getting stomped in the face. But he had enough of that after that, grabbed The Miz and hit him with a nasty belly to belly suplex. He reversed the next move with a big back body drop and punched him in the gut before chucking him to the outside. And on the outside, The Big Show hit a huge gorilla press slam before throwing The Miz into the steel steps and then The Miz gained control throwing the Big Show over the barrier so they can fight in the crowd and fight they did they had a nice big brawl all across the back row of the arena eventually the brawl would lead them to the bit of the crowd where there's a nice big gap and a bunch of weapons and Big Show used those weapons to his advantage destroying Miz with a couple of chair shots and then he went for the knockout punch really early in the match and the Miz didn't kick out so the fans went home a little deflated but still happy as the Big Show retained the title and that's it for this edition of what happened on my universe mode week 29 is coming soon like and subscribe